What is going on? Welcome back to another episode. Um, today we're doing a little something different. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I told you guys this, but um, over the past two months, me and my buddy Brooks have been doing a lot of coyote hunting. Um, we're doing 95% of it at night, so it is very hard to film with my phone without um, infrared or without um, night vision to be able to record all the stuff that we're doing. So I'm kind of going to walk you through a little uh, aerial map and kind of all the stuff that we got um, that we could film. So hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned for this episode. Coyote hunting, baby. Let's go. So for this first spot that I'm showing you guys, um, we'd enter right on this gravel road up here on top, come down and park uh, right about in here. We'd walk up, hit this tree line, and the first time we sat, we sat back in here, looking over this big, it's a big hillside. Um, but we just figured that we wouldn't be able to see much from sitting in that location right here. Um, there's an old abandoned farmhouse down over here, and then just around it, I mean, just a lot of like CRP land, a lot of little thickets, tree lines, um, another little thicket over here, and a couple more tree lines. So we had figured the wind was blowing, um, we were sitting up here, wind is blowing from down here straight over our shoulders like this, and um, we snuck in here, didn't see nothing, didn't see anything, but that's, that's part of coyote hunting. You gotta um, go out there, you gotta give it a lot of sits, you gotta give it a lot of time. Um, you're not gonna just go out and kill them every single time you go out. They're pretty uh, super smart animals. But this place we hunted a couple times. Um, so we hunted right on this tree line, looking down over here the first time. Um, then we sat up in here in this corner and called out across this whole field. And then uh, you can actually enter it from this side too on this gravel road. And then there's a old snowmobile trail that comes down. We walked that snowmobile trail um, all the way down and sat. There's a little knoll right here um, that we sat on and overlooked those two big fields and called back and called back into all of this up here. Great looking spot, just never produced. There's nothing wrong with that though. Always fun, always a good time to get out and go shoot some coyotes, try to at least. Yeah, killed my deer last year and the year before right here. Um, I have a whole bunch of coyotes on trail camera out here. And uh, this is actually a pretty cool spot. Um, there's a big field that you can almost see. You can almost see this field here. There's just a little bit of trees right there. And uh, this little patch of trees that kind of blocks it off a little bit. Um, a bit of a golf course, but there's just, on this golf course, there's just so many swamps. And more swamps. Swamps. Nice tree lines. Um, just like kind of a perfect little spot for them to hang out, hide out. It's kind of a low, low area down in the bottom. Um, down through here it's kind of a low spot but there's also this big patch of woods up in here um, but what happened at this spot they came from up and over here we saw two that we saw two the first night we were here um, they came out of this little chunk of woods ran across this hit this tree line and uh, they're kind of playing games with us the wind was blowing I want to say straight from our spot here out towards this golf course and uh, they worked over this way, worked over this way, worked over this way. Got to about right here. I don't know if they smelt us or if they just got spooked or what, but they bolted and they came down this way, hit this tree line and we lost them because it gets super low right here and right along the edge of the trees at night, it's hard to see, but they came right down here and uh, we never, never saw them again. Um, you can see kind of down right here, but once it hits these trees, it's hard to it's hard to see them. 
So the we went back the, the very next night. Um, and these coyotes actually came from um, this swamp up in here, cut across, and we're sitting, we're sitting right here looking over this big CRP field. Came out of here and came straight, straight down onto us. Brooks blasted one with a shotgun at uh, like 30 yards, dropped it on the spot. Two other ones came in. One peeled off this way, one peeled off this way. And uh, I told Brooks, I said, throw the, um, I told Brooks to throw the coyote in distress call on. He flips it on, and the one that ran off this way turns around, stops about right here, gives me a 100 yard shot. Uh, smoked it, ran probably 30 yards, and look at this blood trail, guys. This is absolutely insane. Just happened. What what just happened right Put there? A dying rabbit calling. What? What? Ten, Ten minutes, minutes in. came by, and a few coyotes came running out in front of us, and we gave them some time and kind of lost them for a second. And the one popped up, came running in with the shotgun. A shotgun killed it back by the decoy. Yeah, which is way the over there. Came, the other two, because there's two right away. I don't know, we're gonna have to look for blood on him. And then that third one came in right after he hit that cup and distress call right after I shot that one. And another one came in and old Brock laid the hammer down. And as you can see, yeah, um, guys, I, I didn't miss at all. Look at this blood trail. Look at this blood trail. Yeah, he's laying right here. Big old coyote. We got two. We got two. Yeah, oh yeah, let's check room. for that blood. Dude, dude. We just killed our first coyotes. Two of them, dude. Well, together. Yeah. We've killed coyotes before. But I've only killed one. I think Brooks has only killed what one or two? One or two. One of them, and now it's not coyote hunting, so this is a Bang! Big times. This is this is awesome. Hey, that was sweet. First set they came within 40 yards. First set, they came within 40 yards and uh Brooks blasted the first one. We switched over to a a pup in distress call, um, like it got injured. And I don't know if it turned around and came back or um, if it was a different one completely, but two coyotes are dead. They're laid on the ground. Let's go. We're saving some fawns. Let's go. We are saving some fawns. Look at this. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. Nice dog. Yeah, that's a nice looking dog. Got a big hole in them, but I, I think that... It can still work out. Yeah, that's a good spot for it because you're gonna gut it right there anyway. Yeah, let's see it. Oh yeah. Oh, first coyotes. First coyotes. Oh dude, yours looks way better. Yours is a nice looking dog, dude. You got a lot older of a dog here. Yeah, he's still a little alive. But hey, two dogs down. Holy smokes. Can you believe it? Uh, pretty pretty crazy spot here um, Ended up getting double out of this spot and uh, Awesome awesome way to save deer awesome way to save turkeys Awesome way to save pheasants and I'm sure the golfers are happy that there's a few coyotes gone too Okay, so this spot here actually is uh, Brooks's uncle owns this he owns just uh, this little creek that runs down through here, over, and then right back up. But we would come out here at night um, and howl a little bit, and we'd hear them from either back in here or back in here, or even maybe back over in this, by this pond. Um, but we'd come down, we'd park, way past this house and this hill kind of comes down kind of comes down to a little hill right here um, we'd hit this tree line and one of the times that we were actually here we got about a quarter of the way down the tree line and we look out in the field and there's four of them running across from right to left 
Um, didn't get a shot because from I think here to this tree line is about 450 yards. Um, they were running at a pretty good pace. We got them to stop a little bit, but I just didn't feel comfortable taking a shot. I didn't have a, a bipod or um, anything to set my gun on. So we let them be. And uh, every other time that we went here and hunted, we never saw any. We worked this down and kind of sat um, in this little group of trees. Pretty awesome spot. We've seen them here multiple times, um, but it just seems like when we see them, it's always at night on a full moon. Um, they're out running around, finding uh, rabbits, finding squirrels, um, finding pheasants, turkeys, anything they can get their mouth on. They want to eat, but there's a really big thicket. I mean, this whole ch chunk here is like super young, undergrown trees. It's just a perfect spot for them to get away, hide, and uh, pop out, run across the field, and hunt through this woods a little bit. Another great spot. Nothing ever happened here, but definitely, definitely in the future, future to hunt again. All right, guys, we have some big news from Coyote Land. Brooks just landed this spot the other day, and I'll give you a little brief rundown of what happened here. It was so crazy and it happened so fast. Like as we were walking in, we spotted them. And right when we got here, they came running out of that swamp over there. The first one ran across and went into those trees. We weren't even close to each other. You were 20 yards from behind me. Yeah. And uh, the second ones came out right at the swamp there too again. And Brooks played the, the coyote in distress or the pup in distress. And it made a straight beeline across this field. And it's laying right there. Brooks was sitting right here. And uh, it didn't see us at all. There was another one with it, and it ran out after Brooks shot and went around, went around this little piece of woods that we're sitting in. Went up on the backside, and I turned around and waited for it to come around the backside of these trees. And it got downwind of us. The wind is blowing like straight down that way, and it went up and ran over the field. Brooks has got one down. How does it feel? That's another nice one. Another shotgun one. Another shotgun one. Oh my gosh, it was instant. Instant. Dude, that thing came flying. I saw that. You played that pup in distress. And it just, boom, beeline, straight line. Yeah. What do we got? Nice little female, probably. Oh, gorgeous. I'm sorry I didn't get that on video, guys, but... Nice that happened so fast. That's a nice looking dog. Holy smokes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. One of the biggest tips I can give you or that I've found very useful this year is uh, we actually killed a coyote. There's a, this little piece of public land right here I mean, it's tiny, not very big at all. But uh, one night, me and Brooks were out scouting around, and uh, we decided to l play a locator call um, right over here. And we actually had a group of coyotes go off in this woods, a single one down here in this uh, like little drainage ditch creek thing, and then more of them back over here. So we knew this was going to be a good spot. Um, we slipped in. To this public land early in the morning like 5 30 um we sat up right on this point it probably wasn't um 10 minutes into calling and 15 minutes into calling um from this point um out to about here um is pretty level pretty flat but once you get all this it kind of goes up a hill and then back down into this creek. But um, we had one come busting over this hill, um, came flying down, flying down. Wind was blowing, not really ideal. Um, we were sitting, as I said, right here, and the wind was blowing down this way. And uh, he came flying, wanted to get downwind, wanted to get downwind, wanted to get downwind. Um, got to about here at about 200, mm, 180. 200 yards and he stopped he smelt us 
he booked it to about right here and I put a like 250 yard shot on him. He sat, did the coyote spin and I took a poke, put another one into him. But just driving around, um, playing the call, uh, like a howling call or a locating call at night just to see if you can get a response. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I found out this year that has helped us be more successful um, hunting coyotes. Because if you're, if you're in it, you could be in the best looking area on a map or the best looking area um, anywhere really. But if there's no coyotes there, you're not gonna be able to call them in. So just a big tip there, always go out, always call, always try to locate. I mean, not every time they're gonna call or howl back, but uh, it's always worth a shot. Um, definitely, definitely got us a coyote at this spot here. Got him. Yeah, he's going down. Let him just sting. He's doing the death roll. He's yeah. gonna go down. Dude, that's a poke. That's 200 yards. I bet. Right, you try to tap him again. I don't think you need to. Do you? He's not down yet. All right, hit him again. Got him. With the hand call, baby. <laughs> Dude, 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 nice first one on film, poke, first nice one on film. Guys, I'm sorry, I just had my phone sitting in the case looking over the call. All right, so we were tucked back in this tree line. We walked this out, sun is just coming up. I picked Brooks up this morning at 5.30. Came out to the first spot. We located dogs actually just over this hill last night. And sure enough, uh, the Fox Pro, the batteries must be dying or something, but call turned off mid-set. So I had a hand call with me. Gave her to old Brooks. He started wailing on it, and all of a sudden he goes, oh, there's one coming from the left, from the left. And, uh... I think that game it came in probably 1,000 yards, 1,500 yards. Oh, yeah. From. Half a mile. section, and it came probably from that woods back there. Yeah, a half a mile to a mile. And uh, I put a 230-yard shot from shot. that tip of that. Oh, man. I don't even know. I didn't think you had it in him, I, I didn't. Let me see if I can zoom. There he is, Lane. That's six times zoom. <laughs> we'll just get up there a little bit. All right, we'll show you when we get up to him. There it is, Lane right there. Oh, what a morning. That's, dude, that's a pole. <laughs> this is your first shot. Yep. Oh, he started spinning. Oh. Yeah, there's no one. No, that's probably when he's spinning. He's spinning. Yeah. Female again? Maybe? Oh yeah, I smoked his back Open leg. Open him up a little bit. Well, I don't know, female? Female, it looks like. Or male. This is Maybe male. male. Male, young male. Not bad. Here we go. Not the best shot, but hey, yeah. we got him down. It worked. Nice shoot, Brock. Yeah. Oh. yeah, he did some damage on him. I don't think he needed to pump that second round into him. <laughs> I don't think so either. I don't even know if I hit him on that second round. 
Oh, you, you did. Off. You definitely did. Whoa. That was a lot. Uh, thank you guys for staying tuned through that. Um, I know it was a lot of like aerial footage, but the, the hunting that we do for cows is all pretty much at night, and it's pretty hard to film. Um, I, I want to be able to uh, get a, a camera that either films at night or have a scope that I can record that um, is like either infrared or something that you can actually see at night. Um, but if you guys could take five tips out of this video, um, one would be hunt at night, hunt at night, hunt at night. Um, I've seen, I think we saw probably 25 to 30 dogs this, this winter, um, at night and we only saw two during the day and they were in the first 15 minutes or the last 15 minutes of the day. Um, hunting at night is huge. Tip number two is to go out, do some scouting. Go look around, go drive around, find some tracks, um, and then call. Uh, either that being like a locator call or a howl. See if you can get them to howl back um, and so you know exactly where they are. Know, you know what time they're in that area, and uh, you can get in and slip in there and uh, up your percentages on killing one. Um, spot, or tip number three would be um, put your time in. Definitely go put your time in. Hit multiple, multiple spots. Um, hunt six, ten spots a night. Um, sit them out for half an hour, 45 minutes for each one. But uh, definitely put your time in. You're not going to kill them on every stand. You're not going to kill them every time you go out. You got to go out. You got to keep grinding. You got to keep going. Don't be discouraged because you're not seeing them. Um, they're a smart animal, very smart animal. And uh, they're very tough to kill. So uh, tip number four, ask for permission, ask different landowners. I think we picked up uh, five or six new spots this year um, just from knocking on doors and asking. I mean, what's the worst thing that someone can say uh, when asking for permission? No, um, just hop to the next place, ask away. Uh, a lot of times people don't like coyotes. Uh, they have livestock, they got chickens, and uh, they don't like the animals. So um, ask, ask for permission. And then tip number five would be hunt areas that you know that there's coyotes. Either that being going out and scouting, um, driving around looking for fresh tracks, uh, crossing the road and stuff, or uh, you know playing a locator call and uh, trying to get some to howl. But five tips right there that you can take and uh, become a better coyote hunter. Thank you guys for staying tuned through all that. Um, if you want more videos like this, more tips and tricks on either how to kill coyotes, how to kill deer, how to fish um let me know i will definitely do them um but thank you guys for staying tuned if you guys go down and hit that like button hit that subscribe button comment and share i would greatly appreciate it until next video we will see you have a good one